Welcome to Lawyers, Guns and Money on the Tiger. This is a segment where we look at legal issues around the country. And uh, we've got just the person to speak to. It's Ben Hart from Integrity Legal. There's a link underneath the description if you'd like to get in contact with Ben. Ben, now uh, we've had some interesting topics uh, in this particular series. We're going to move on to uh, another one, which a lot of people have asked about. You might like to shed a bit of... Um, light on the issue of getting married in Thailand, mm -hmm. specifically, a, uh, I suppose, in many of the cases from the people that have been asking, uh, foreign men marrying Thai women. Can, can you do it? First of all, thanks for having me. The, um, yeah, sure. It, it's definitely possible. The question often becomes, and I'm not, I don't want to get too far off topic here, but immigration back to a home country of that foreign man often becomes a component in this. So the actual marriage or the timing thereof, you know, for example, in the United States, we have fiance visas and marriage visas. You know, not being married may be better depending on your circumstances. But long story short, sure, a foreign national can come to Thailand. They can marry a Thai national. There, it, Thailand has, in my opinion, a very efficient method of dealing with both marriage and divorce. Uh, insofar as they utilize a civil registrar method, wherein the Amper, the CAT here in Bangkok, that's the civil registrar office, you just basically go down there. You may need to take some witnesses with you, relevant identity documents, and go ahead and you just sign and you're married. It all can happen in a matter of like an hour. It, it's not a matter of, a, of any tor type of ceremony. It's just, it's a civil matter. Is there any particular documentation that a foreigner would need if they're going to get married in Thailand to a, a Thai person? Generally speaking, there's going to be documentation pertaining to that foreign national single status that's going to need to be retrieved from their embassy here in Thailand. Then that documentation may need to be processed for legalization purposes with the uh, Ministry of Foreign Affairs, and then you're going to have to go ahead and deal with uh, the actual civil registrar office on top of your ID documents. You know, take your passport. They may want to see a second form of ID. The Thai national, uh, Thai nationals fortunately have uh, a blue Thai ID card, which is kind of their all-in-one ID document. Although sometimes you'll see where the civil registrar wants to also see the Tebian bond, their blue house book. Okay. So fr from a, a cultural point of view, what are some of the key things that uh, sort of come up as couples get married here in mm -hmm. Thailand? I, I understand that uh, concept of things like dowry mm -hmm. uh, are mm -hmm. still popular in, in some parts of Thailand. Yes, and, and that actually can be, that concept can be very fluid depending on, you know, people kind of forget Thailand is actually quite a polyglot nation insofar as there's Thai Chinese, Thai Indian, there's, you know, there's even Thai Farang, you know, there's mixed Caucasian Thai, Luk Krung, so-called. You know, different and different folks are going to have different views, even regionally, even amongst sort of the more, for lack of a better term, indigenous native Thai population. You know, I often find that that dowry issue often comes up when you're marrying somebody more from up country or from, you know, up north. Uh, whereas maybe down here in Bangkok, you don't see it quite as often because I often find that like Bangkok Thais, they don't tend to make a big issue of that. Oftentimes, if they're middle class, their their concern is, yeah, you take care of e each other. We're not really worried about a dowry under these circumstances. Do, do things like dowry, being a, a cultural, do they end up as a legal document saying that I've signed this uh, amount of money or this object over to you? Not, not in the, not in any relevant sense of the. Well, I mean, prenuptial agreements do exist in Thailand. You yep. can have pre prenups. And, and in fact, there is a whole system whereby those are formalized with the marriage. They become sort of an integral part of the union, if you will, the sort of terms of the union. So I guess in that sense, yeah, I guess they could kind of be, that dowry could kind of become sort of a, sort of a component of that. Well, if we're talking about marriage, sadly, we also have to talk about the, uh, the other end of that particular arrangement. Uh, it could be a divorce. Is a divorce more complicated for foreigners and Thais, uh, or is it straightforward here in Thailand? Uh, depends on the type of divorce. And, and to put the finest point on it, if it's, a con if it's what we call in the, in the American system, the sort of common law system in the U.S., a non-contested divorce, you know, even those in the United States, you got to go before a judge. You got to you got to do some formalities. Here in Thailand, the, again, it's I, I got to give credit to the efficiency. 
of the civil law system that they utilize here. If both parties are just like, hey, you know, this isn't working anymore, they both can go down to the civil registrar and just, again, it takes about an hour. And when you say the civil divorced. registrar, that's like the local council. Uh, the OMPER, what's called the OMPER outside of Bangkok, it's called the CAT office here in Bangkok. Uh, it's basically, it's sort of like City Hall, the Bureau of Vital Statistics and the Registrar of Deeds all rolled into one. Now, things like um, a, a partnership agreement, a prenuptial agreement going into a, a marriage, do, do they carry a, a lot of legal weight? Because, I mean, I know a lot of things in Thailand, you have a document, but sometimes <laughs> the reality doesn't sometimes uh, fit the document. And, I mean, what situation are you, are you in with a prenup? Uh, prenups here in Thailand, for use here in Thailand, and, and there's nuance to this, uh, especially... Of course there is. Uh, right, but if, if, for example, we deal with a lot of Americans and where we're dealing with fiancé visas, they're not legally married here. So they end up being legally married in the United States, which that's an entirely different analysis on okay. the prenup than here. Here in Thailand, when you do a prenup and you marry here in Thailand, you literally incorporate the prenup in the registration of the marriage. So the civil registrar quite literally formalizes that as part of the terms of that marriage. Now, this can make the actual registration process a little bit more, and maybe a little is, too, is underestimating, but a bit more cumbersome compared to just going in and getting married. But yeah, we have found where it's properly formalized under Thai law, it will be respected if you're in a what we would call contested divorce situation. And more to that point, you brought up the fact, uh, I said non-contested divorce, pretty, pretty straightforward to get, that, to get that dissolved. If it's contested, you're talking about a totally different kettle of fish. This is gonna be something that can be a very protracted proceeding. You could see a long, I mean, it's almost like a trial. You're, you're really trying to make your case as to sort of your side of the marital estate mm -hmm. and what all went on. And there's even kind of what I would call in the, in the American sense, a kind of fault divorce kind of paradigm where, you know, somebody's trying, maybe the parties are trying to blame each other for why the marriage fell apart. And that can have implications for division of marital assets. Okay, I can't get a visa. I can't get the education visa. I want to stay in Thailand. Can I, are there arranged marriages whereby you can uh, go and uh, rush down to the, the local council, get married, and uh, then, you know, does that give you an automatic visa? I would most assuredly dissuade people from that course of action. Yes, there is a no marriage visa. And if you're in a legitimate marriage, you can avail yourself of that marriage visa option. As you may be aware, um, O marriage visas, I, I would argue in many ways, O marriage visas, especially those where the person is using their financial assets, not utilizing a work permit, those O marriage visas, uh, they get inspected a lot now. Like right. they actually literally send immigration officers out to scrutinize folks that are doing that. At the same time, a couple of years ago, there was a ring of folks busted over basically sham marriages. They were arranging sham marriages. And it turned out that not only were they arranging sham marriages where both parties were were involved in it, they had figured out some way where they could they could rope in people that never even had met the other counterparty and they would go down to the civil registrar and say, Oh, this says you're married. And they what, what do you mean I'm married? And immigration came down hard on that. That I I've never I've seen very few things that they've ever come down harder on that than what than that situation. So, yeah, don't ever make major life decisions simply for immigration benefits. There's other ways to get visas. Um, okay, interesting topic, and I'm sure we'll probably revisit that sometime. Ben Hart from Integrity Legal. Thanks very much.